Hi everybody, Ms. Calabrese here. Uh, so welcome to the first one of our lectures for the series for um, AMP1. Uh, in this video, we're going to be just talking about some basics and introducing you to the concepts of anatomy and physiology. All right, so we'll start off with just definitions of the terms. So anatomy is the study of uh, structure. So looking at the structure of the body, uh, physiology is the study of function. Right, so every structure has a function and these things are usually related. So uh, as we go through the course, we're going to be talking about different body structures and then how they work, the function or the physiology of them. All right, so structure a lot of times is going to mirror function, uh, which means that that your body is designed in such a way that it works well. Right, so certain structures um, are designed so that they function as protection. So, for example, in the pictures here, we can see uh, the bones of your skull. Um, so those bones, um, the anatomy of them is that they're they're made of very tough, durable bone, um, so that they can protect the the soft brain underneath. Um, that structure and function is very different from um, the picture on the bottom of your screen here, which is of um, air sacs in the lungs, which are very delicate, very thin, because um, the, the function of those is for um, air to diffuse across. Right. So structure is going to mirror function. All right, so we're going to be talking about structures um, on a lot of different levels of scale. So we're going to start off the class by talking about very, very tiny things. We're going to talk about um, the smallest uh, elements of matters. So we'll begin by talking about atoms uh, and how atoms can bond together to form molecules. Um, small molecules form together to, uh, to give us larger macromolecules. Uh, those macromolecules are the building blocks of our cells. Um, a bunch of the same type of cell together gives us a tissue. Um, uh, different types of tissues together gives us organs. Uh, multiple organs together gives us organ systems. Uh, and then multiple different organ systems, each with their own function, will give us a functioning organism. Right? So we're going to kind of work our way from the smallest um, up to the largest. Right, so uh, in the context of uh, your body, for example, so if we look at the top of this pyramid here, we can see individual atoms. So we've got some hy hydrogen atoms and an oxygen atom. Um, if we bond those atoms together, that's going to give us a water molecule. Now, water molecules are really important um, in your body. Obviously, your body is made mostly of water. Um, so we can see an example of a cell here. Uh, and this particular cell um, is full of water. Um, Many of those cells together are going to form a tissue. Uh, many different tissues together will form an organ. This organ that you can see here is your urinary bladder. That, that urinary bladder belongs in an organ system, the urinary system. Uh, and that's one of many systems um, that you need to have a total functioning organism. All right, so we'll spend a lot of time talking about cells here. Um, so cells are, this is the basic unit of life, right? Um, so there's no um, living thing that's smaller than one individual cell. Um, you, as a human being, have somewhere in the realm of 10 trillion different cells in your body, um, and they fall into different categories. So you've got about 300 different types of cells, um, but you started off as one single cell. So that means we got all of those different types of cells through a process called differentiation. So differentiation is taking one cell, kind of like a stem cell, uh, an undifferentiated cell, and turning it into kind of its final uh, differentiated form. Right. And of all those different cell types, so 300 different cell types, they're all going to fall into one of four different categories of tissues. Right. So our four major tissue types here are epithelial tissue, connective tissue, muscle tissue, and nervous tissue. So epithelium is usually for covering uh, or protecting. Uh, so epithelial tissue is the type of tissue that forms uh, the top layer of your skin um, or the, the top layers of the inside of your mouth or the inside of your respiratory or digestive tract that's all covered in epithelial tissue. Uh, connective tissue is uh, usually a tougher kind of tissue. Um, it's, it's used to hold things together. Um, so that literally connects different parts of your body together. Muscular tissue is for movement. Uh, so so um, either moving the skeleton around or moving things around inside your body is the job of muscular tissue. <clears throat> and nervous tissue 
um, is for communication. So nervous tissue is, is basically in charge of communicating across the body. And so those are your four um, major types of tissues. Uh, and then moving up our, our hierarchical scale here, um, organs is our next level of organization. Um, so organs um, are built of usually um, all four different tissue types. So, so pretty much every organ in your body is going to be composed of all four different types of tissues. Um, so the example uh, in the picture here is the organ of your skin, right? So your skin is composed of all four different tissue types. So we can see the, the top layer of the of the skin here, that's gonna be epithelial tissue. I'll kind of highlight so you can see what I'm talking about. Top layer is epithelial tissue. Um, this, this whole region here is all connective tissue. Um, we've also got some muscular tissue here. So these tiny little muscles that are in your skin that are attached to each one of your hairs, uh, that's muscular tissue. And then we've also um, got some tactile receptors here. So that's nervous tissue, special nerves so that you can feel sensation in the skin. Right, so all four different tissue types are usually represented in every single organ. All right, and then an organ system is just um, a group of different organs um, that are related because they're performing uh, a common function. Right, so the example here is the digestive system. So uh, lots of different organs are gonna be part of the digestive system, but the main job of that system is to take in food, break down food, get the nutrients out of it, and then eliminate whatever wastes are left over. So this is gonna include everything from your teeth and your salivary glands inside your mouth, um, to, to your throat, to your esophagus, stomach, intestines, um, all the way down to um, accessory organs like the liver and the pancreas that are contributing um, secretions to the digestive tract. So all of those organs are part of the larger organ system um, of the digestive, digestive system. All right, a little bit of terminology here. Um, so difference between gross anatomy and microscopic anatomy. Uh, gross anatomy is when we're talking about these larger structures of the body, so structures that you can basically see with the naked eye. Uh, and microscopic anatomy is referring to things that are very, very small um, that you would likely need a microscope to be able to visualize. Um, so if we're talking about um, uh, your lungs, for example, so lungs are, are very, very large organs, that's, that's gross anatomy. But if we're talking about, for example, the air sacs inside your lungs, that's microscopic anatomy because those are very, very small, right? So gross is large, microscopic is very small. Um, we can also talk about uh, things in terms of regional versus systemic. So regional anatomy is looking at interrelationships between structures that are in a given region of the body. So um, regional anatomy would say, if I was looking at things going on inside your head, for example, where a systemic anatomy is focusing on a single body system. And that single body system doesn't necessarily all have to be in the same uh, region, right? So if I'm talking about um, the skin, um, the integumentary system, that system covers the entire body. So I couldn't really talk about it in a regional way. Uh, but if I wanted to talk about um, the head, that would be regional anatomy or the thorax would be regional anatomy. Um, versus systemic anatomy, which is focusing on a single system, like respiratory, digestive, integumentary, uh, et cetera. Okay, so main functions of life. Um, so these, these are um, important functions for um, human life uh, in particular, but, but also for all life. So there has to be some sort of organization. Um, so life is organized. Um, in, in cells, and then those cells get organized together into tissues, at least in, our, in the case of humans. Um, uh, there also has to be a metabolism. So metabolism is, is all of the chemical reactions that are going on inside the cells of that organism. Uh, responsiveness means that you're responding to the environment somehow. Um, and that can be as simple as um, responding towards uh, food and away from danger, uh, responding to light, uh, and away from darkness, things like that. Um, movement is uh, necessary um, to move things around, either to move the body around itself or to move things around inside the body. Uh, and then development, growth, and reproduction. So that's kind of self-explanatory. We need to develop from a single cell um, into um, a full-grown organism uh, that's capable of reproducing itself. Okay. 
Uh, and then as far as major requirements for life, so these, um, these are pretty obvious, right? We need oxygen. Um, oxygen uh, you need in order to so, um, so that your cells can produce uh, ATP, which is a molecule of energy storage for your cells. Um, your cells cannot produce ATP or not adequate enough ATP without uh, the presence of oxygen. So that's the entire reason you need to breathe in oxygen. Um, you also need nutrients. Um, and so we can categorize nutrients as um, either macronutrients, micronutrients, or water. So the macronutrients would be things like carbohydrates, lipids, proteins. Um, micronutrients are things like vitamins and minerals. Um, we also need to maintain temperature, right? So it's important that, um, that you maintain uh, your body's internal temperature around 37 degrees Celsius. Uh, if it gets too, too hot, you could go into heat stroke. If it gets too cold, you can go into hypothermia. Uh, and then this one we don't often think about too much, but you do need to maintain a stable atmospheric pressure within certain limits um, so that we can get the oxygen necessary dissolved into your bloodstream so that it can find its way to your cells. Um, so we don't want to be in places where atmospheric pressure is too low, that you won't be able to extract enough oxygen from the atmosphere, or where the pressure is too high, uh, and you're getting other dissolved gases in your blood. Okay, so um, at this point, I'm just going to kind of run through the, the major organ systems that we're going to be covering throughout the entire term. So um, we'll cover some of these in AMP1, and then we'll cover the rest of them in AMP2. But I want you to think of these two courses as kind of going together, because it's basically just one continuous course where we're studying the entire body. Um, so one of the first systems we're going to cover after we get out of the way of some of kind of the basic chemistry of life um, is the integumentary system. So integumentary is your skin and related structures. Um, and the purpose of the integument is to protect the body. So this is your, your barrier between um, the outside and the inside, right? It's, it's what main, maintains you as an individual functioning organism. Um, so um, it's going to protect you from... Uh, from pathogens and things like that. It's also going to help you regulate your temperature um, uh, through doing things like um, if you're too hot, we can increase the release of sweat and that's going to cool you down. If you're too cold, you can get goosebumps and shivers and that's going to um, increase the body temperature. And we also eliminate some wastes uh, through the sweat, uh, which goes right out through the skin. All right. Next organ system we'll talk about is the skeletal system. Uh, so skeletal system is bones and joints. Uh, main function is um, uh, protection and support, right? So um, if you want to think about the, the regions that are very protective here are regions like your skull or your rib cage. Those are protecting squishy organs underneath. Um, but mostly the skeletal system is for support so that we can have something rigid for your muscles to attach to in order that they can move your body around. Um, in addition to protection and support, uh, your skeletal system is also responsible for creating uh, all of your blood cells. So all the blood cells get made within the bones. All right, uh, then we'll move on to the muscular system. So muscular system is for movement. Um, so it, it's for moving your body around in space by attaching skeletal muscle to bone and also for moving things around inside your body. So moving blood around inside your cardiovascular system, moving uh, food around inside your digestive system is all um, muscular movement. Um, and in addition to that, those muscles are very um, uh, highly energetic cells and they create a lot of heat as a byproduct. So your muscles are um, largely responsible for helping maintain uh, your body temperature. All right, and then uh, the nervous system. So Nervous system is going to include a uh, central nervous system, which is brain and spinal cord, but then also a whole bunch of peripheral nerves um, and some sensory organs as well. Um, and so these are going to be important for sensing uh, changes in the external environment, sensing changes in the internal environment, uh, and then responding to those changes, responding to stimuli that, that are received either inside or outside. So coordinating and controlling the body through sending and receiving messages. All right, then we'll move on to the endocrine system. So the endocrine system is um, a, a series of, of glands that are kind of distributed all over the body um, that are important for producing hormones. 
Um, so hormones help to regulate the body uh, in the way that they can communicate messages across the body, just in a different way than the nervous system communicates. So both nervous and endocrine are for communication, uh, but the endocrine system operates in a very different way. Right. And then uh, cardiovascular system. So move on to cardiovascular, which includes your heart uh, and your blood vessels um, and the blood itself. Um, so the, the point of your cardiovascular system is to carry blood and nutrients all around the body. So we're delivering that blood uh, to where it needs to go. Um, and in so delivering, uh, we're also carrying uh, heat around the body because we're going to be moving blood to areas that are colder to help warm them up or, um, or, or um, dilating vessels if we need to, um, to radiate heat uh, off in certain areas. Um, so that's the, the job of your cardiovascular system. Uh, and then lymphatic system and immune system kind of work together, so we'll sort of lump those two together. Um, the, the, the immune system is responsible for protecting you against pathogens uh, from infectious disease, um, from helping to recognize abnormal cells in your body and uh, destroy cancers to, to taking down bacteria and viruses, uh, and just cleaning uh, your body of debris, any, any kind of debris that finds its way uh, into the body. So your, your lymphatic system is going to help by filtering the blood uh, and it's also going to aid in the transportation of fats uh, from your digestive system to your circulatory system. All right and then the respiratory system um, is for uh, breathing, right? It's just for getting the oxygen from the atmosphere into your bloodstream so that that oxygen can then be delivered to your cells. Uh, and then it's also going to be good for eliminating CO2. Uh, so CO2, which is a byproduct of some of the metabolic reactions in your cell, needs to be expelled out of the body. So it's going to leave the body through the respiratory system. All right. And then uh, digestive system, we already mentioned briefly, but just um, the idea that the digestive system is there for um, ingesting food, so taking food in, breaking it down, digesting it, and then absorbing those nutrients um, across the intestinal wall and into the bloodstream so that those nutrients can get to all of your cells. Uh, and then whatever is left over that's not useful, uh, we eliminate as waste products. All right, and then urinary system. Um, so this is your kidneys, your bladder, ureters, urethra. Um, this is uh, an important system for the excretion of wastes, again, different kind of wastes than the ones that, that go out through the digestive system. Um, but in addition to eliminating wastes and kind of filtering the blood, uh, the urinary system is also very important for the regulation of fluid balance, electrolyte balance, and maintaining the, the correct pH of your blood. All right, and then the last system we'll talk about um, is the reproductive system. So your reproductive systems um, are really the only system in your body that are not necessary for life. So you don't need a reproductive system in order to be alive, uh, but you do need one in order to procreate. Um, and so in order to reproduce, you'll need a reproductive system. Um, and so these are just the, um, the gonads, so either ovaries or testes, depending on if you're talking about a male, female, uh, and then the associated secondary sex characteristics. Okay, so just a brief review here at the end of our first uh, short little lecture here. So think about these different um, uh, organs listed here and tell me which system you think they belong. So, so I'll give you a minute to think about it as we go through here. So liver, heart, pituitary gland, kidney, sebaceous glands, and pancreas. So think about where each one of those is going to belong. Right, and there's your, there are your answers. So the liver belongs in the digestive system. The heart is in the circulatory or cardiovascular. Uh, pituitary gland is part of the endocrine system. Kidneys are part of the urinary system. Sebaceous glands um, are part of the integumentary system. So those are tiny glands in your skin. Uh, and then the pancreas, um, that's part of both your digestive system and your endocrine system. So it's a dual function organ that we find in both systems. All right, so I hope this was a helpful introduction to the material. Uh, let me know if you have any questions.